I'm Mark Kepler with Purdue University Extension Service, and my office is located here in Rochester at the uh, fairgrounds. I write a column for the Rochester Sentinel. Uh, it shows up each Friday. And today I'm going to go over and I'm going to read one of those columns from May 23rd of 2014. And the title of the column is A Tale of Two Insecticides. Charles Dickens wrote a famous book, The Tale of Two Cities. I'm going to modify and modernize that title into The Tale of Two Insecticides. The story has been repeated several times with various names and multiple derivatives. It starts out with the discovery of a natural biological insecticide. This insecticide is discovered to be effective against certain pests, but it has its limitations. It does not act very long or it breaks down easily. That's where the chemist enters the spot. Working in the lab, they find a way to modify the organism to enhance its positive points and develop the second insecticide. The classic example of this is pyrethrum, a naturally occurring insecticide found in a certain type of chrysanthemum called a Dalmatian chrysanthemum. It's not the type we normally grow in our area. Scientists working off of that basic chemistry have developed a variety of synthetic products that are longer lasting and more specific for certain uses. Many products available in local stores are based upon this chemistry. The insecticide spinosad is a chemical derived in the 1970s. It was isolated from soil collected inside a sugarcane mill in a rum distillery in the Virgin Islands. It's a natural compound derived from the fermentation of a bacteria. It is considered a natural organic insecticide since the finding of this product, chemists have developed over 200 synthetic variations. What is neat about this product is that it seems to be more active on insect bad guys than on the good guys. For example, it is the product of choice for fly control and bagworm on evergreens. Previous column that I did talked about spotted wing dropsilla mentions it as one of the potential controls. At the same time, it does not harm ladybugs and praying mantis. It is now even available as a flea powder for use on your dog or head lice in human. So it is a very safe product to use. I think we will be seeing a lot about this product in the future as it becomes more and more available and easier to find. What I found out is that it's hard to find spinosad locally. When you do go to look for it, you have to look on the label and I'll go through all the label dressing and all the different brand names and get down to the part that says active ingredient. There you will see the name Spinosad. Spin O Sad. I hope the tail of this product is a long, successful one, and soon you will not have to travel to a different city to find it. I'm Mark Kepler, Purdue University Extension Service in Rochester, Indiana. Thank you.